This episode of Overreaction is brought to you by Race Tech. Motocross fans, it's time to overreact. And guys, it's press day, okay? It's press day. The quest for the million dollars and all that money starts on Saturday, but for whatever reason, the boys went absolutely mad on Friday. You got first turn crashes on the fake start. You got Jason Anderson weeding in the sand. You got Justin Barsha weeding in the rhythm section. Guys, all the money that, that starts on Saturday, it's not on press day. That's, that's just a chance to wave to the fans and say hello to the press and get the track figured out. But everybody went absolutely crazy. Even the 65 rider got the memo. Whoa, is a million dollars on the line? All right, I'm going to go for it too. But Friday was wild. It was out of control. And then Saturday, things did settle down, but not on the fast laps. Justin Cooper, fastest in qualifying in the 450s. Nice work, buddy. And then you got RJ Hampshire beating Hayden Deegan by about a half a second in times on Saturday. Apparently, he was chirping a little bit along the way, but guys, Friday, press days, come on, let's let's be a little bit more careful, all right? We got to drop the gates on Saturday, which we shall do now. Let's go. 250 Moto 1, sponsored by Scott USA. All right, so 250 Moto number one. This one was different for me, okay? I'm in attendance. I'm at Charlotte, and I was actually sitting in section 00 or 00, whatever. I saw Jalik Swole go down, like, pretty much right in front of me, and that was terrible. Uh, he wasn't moving for a while, so I'm thinking, is it his head? Is it his body? And that was a scary one for everybody in the stands, but he eventually gets up. That's good to see. He gets taken back to the pit area. So now we have the restart. I'm gonna start right now by just telling you all, I actually really like the split start, okay? I like the anticipation, waiting for like 30 seconds to find out who's gonna get it once they come together. And it was Juju Bomer who got this one. Kitchen at the first one, bummer for him, but Juju Bomer is gonna take the lead. Rookie of the year, run for it, buddy, let's go. I gotta be honest though, I'm sitting in the stands and every eyeball was watching Hayden Deegan make his way through the pack. And here's the cool part. This track was not like a great track for passing, but there was some opportunities. You kind of had to force your will. And he just did that on every rider. He did it in different parts of the track. It didn't matter where he was. He was just squeezing these guys like a freaking python. And that eventually would lead him up to RJ Hampshire. Okay, now there's been some chirping going on in practice. I love it. I'm here for it. Hayden Deegan apparently doesn't like it. He gets by RJ in the rhythm section. Obviously, RJ gets caught up in the danger zone and goes down. But first, I want to start with RJ. I like that he at least went for it. All right, sometimes you got to stand up to the bully. And he was the one who decided, I'll stand up to the bully. Did it work? No, it did not. He eventually goes down right there next to danger in the danger zone, of course. I applaud the guy for at least going for it. On this rhythm section, though, I got to make a point on the rhythm section. Yes, it was good. It was fast. It obviously worked for Hayden Deegan, but it's not because it was so much faster. It was cleaner. There was no ruts. He was the only one taking that line, and it wasn't even hard. Cade Clayson, no offense, Cade Clayson, but he was doing that every single lap in 450B qualifying, so the rhythm was not hard. But that line was so much smoother as the other side of the rhythm section went to complete just rut fest. Deegan had a smooth line the entire moto. Eventually makes his way up to Juju Bomer in the lead. He goes by him in that rhythm section. Juju makes a mistake, of course, in those ruts. So Hayden Deegan, incredible ride. And I got to tell you, he is better in person, way better in person than he is on TV. That was a purely incredible moto. He is no longer one dimensional. It's not about locking the wrist. The guy is smart. He's polished. He can pass at will. Oh my gosh, and this is not an overreaction, but damn, that was impressive. 250 Moto 2, sponsored by Mika Metals. All right, 250 Moto number two, Hayden Deegan, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna hole shot and just smash everybody and bore everybody in attendance? Or are you gonna get another bad start? Thank you very much for getting a bad start. Again, it's Juju Bomer who's out front early. Hayden Deegan's got some work to do, but Levi Kitchen was super mad on the first lap. That was an angry first lap. I think the first moto probably bummed him out a bit. So he makes a pass into the lead and that is perfect for him. Clear track, he's got that top end speed. Levi, what you gonna do with that lead, bro? But it ends up turning into the Hayden Deegan show again. So let me explain how difficult this really was. Most riders, all riders, like to take the line that they know the most. They're more comfortable in it. They trust it. They just saw it a lap ago. So they like to stick to the line that they know. To move around and just take different lines and go wide open willy through all of them without caring, that's really special. But to do it by people, is exceptionally special. And for Hayden Deegan, that's what he does. He doesn't care what line he's in. He just takes it as hard as he can. He moves around. That is a gift. There's nobody else in this class that can do that. 
in the history of the sport. There's been guys that can do that, but I, I haven't seen that really in a long time. So Hayden Deegan has tapped into something very special. He does not care what line he's in. He just goes wide open and makes moves, which would lead him up to Levi Kitchen. And poor Levi, I mean, this was a chance to really bounce back and kind of throw one on Deegan. Hey, let's go one-on-one -on -one for this uh, the, the Super Motocross Championship. He makes a mistake. Deegan was probably going to get him anyway. So he goes on to take the lead and take the win. But my boy Juju, my boy Juju gets second overall. And this week on the Daniel Blair Show, I'm going to tell you all about him. I'll give you a little hint. It was your boy who signed him to his first KTM contract. That's right. I'll tell you about it this week. 450 Moto One, sponsored by Guts Racing. 450 Moto Number One. Jet versus Chase. That's what everyone came to see. Of course, the old Bulls had no chance, right? Open foot, insert mouth. The gate goes down and the whole shot goes to the old bull himself, Eli Tomac, who grabs the lead. And let me tell you right now, nothing happened in this moto that's worth even breaking down. So I'm not gonna even try to bore you with that. Instead, this segment, I guess, is just gratitude segment. I mean, Eli Tomac has won everything. He's rich, he's in his 30s. Now, he doesn't have to be doing any of this, but he still wants to race. And as fans who love racing and battles and storylines, we, we have to appreciate him. I mean, everybody. There's, there, there can't be anybody watching this right now that isn't just absolutely stoked that Eli Tomac has decided to grace us with his presence and keep racing. And this moto was an absolute slap. So sometimes the motos aren't really good if there's no battles and no action. This one had none of that. But this one was special because it was Eli Tomac smacked these boys at the first round of the SMX playoff first moto. And uh, again, that made this race very special. And on behalf of all the fans, Eli Tomac, thank you for being back. And not only being back, but being so bad to the bone. Eli! 450 Moto 2, sponsored by EMT Racing. All right, 450 Moto number two. Can Eli Tomac do it again, or will Jet Lawrence wake up and take the overall victory from the old bull? Well, when the gate went down, it was Justin Cooper who grabbed the lead, and then Eli Tomac on the opening lap says, hey, move over, mustache. I'm getting by. The old bull is back. Show some respect to your elders, and he makes a pass on Jet Lawrence and takes off after his teammate Justin Cooper, who he eventually passes uh, early in the race as well. Now he's got clear track, and Eli is gone again. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, Jet Lawrence and his mustache did wake up and fought back and got to Eli Tomac. And look, this is a battle that we may have never seen if things are a little bit different with Eli Tomac and his decision making. The, we, we never even get to see this battle, but we did get to see it. And of course, Jet Lawrence is better than everybody in the class. Let's just accept the reality. He is better than everybody right now. He's on another level. If they're on level 9.5, he's on level 9.9. .9. That's just a fact. He goes by. But Eli Tomac, again, appreciation show for me. I, if he doesn't decide to come back, we don't even get to see these two generations cross. Okay, Eli Tomac could have been done. Jet Lawrence could have begun. There could have been absolutely no crossover whatsoever. But there is crossover. And guess what? I think we're going to see more of it. Maybe this is an overreaction on Charlotte. But I think Eli Tomac is feisty and hungry and wants to come back and wants to be a winner which will make Jet Lawrence have to ride at his very best, which he did today in that second moto. He's purely the best in the class, but Eli's going to keep him honest if he wants to, and that was obvious today. So, Eli, again, on behalf of all the fans of Supercross and Motocross and Super Motocross, thank you so much for staying in the game. You're a bad dude. 